Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper. Guys, in this video today, I want to show you um, what I'm doing over here at Incredible Tiny Homes um, at the factory. Now, this is my uh, part-time thing I do whenever I'm not out and about doing work for myself. And so, what we're looking at today, I want to educate you on, is something that is super simple um, to build for yourself and set up um, if you so choose to do. And also, I'm going to show you a neat trick of the trade, um, should you ever get in this situation, all right? Um, now, the first thing I'm going to do is go over this, okay? What you're seeing here, I call the doghouse, all right? Now, you're going to see later, um, you also probably check it out, because Randy will probably do a video on, on Incredible Tiny Homes, um, uh, Facebook or YouTube One, um, the new off-grid that they're doing over on the pad of all the houses we're building. I'm going to show you how that we're running all our tooling and what I'm doing over there too whenever we get over there in a bit. But what we've got is these batteries, these Trojans had set in storage over the winter and so the voltage had got low. So what I've done is um, I set everything back up um, so that uh, we could use these over at the new place since it got moved. And I'm charging them up off another tiny house and I'll get into that in a minute but because I'm going to tell you a couple options you got it as far as bringing a battery bank back to life if the voltage has gotten low um, and you know like batteries gotten cold etc what you see here in front of you is an all-in-one inverter now I'm going to tell you something about this a lot of people are not tech savvy okay on solar and etc now these you can get these different places um, you can find them out and about um, you know they these are the ones that manufactured specifically for incredible tiny homes but being also like I said there's a lot of these unit type units out here but the great thing about this is if you want to build your um, own solar you need to learn how to set up a battery bank in 48 volt and what that means is these are 12 volt batteries all right so we're gonna start at the very bottom you're gonna go from negative to positive negative to positive negative to positive when you do that that's going to tie four batteries together okay that will leave you a positive and a negative post uncovered you now have your battery bank in 48 volts okay now if you set up multiple banks to you've you have originally done these in series okay now what you're going to do is parallel those together now you can see you're a parallel cable that's tying that negative to that negative okay and back there that positive to that positive now this in turn what that what does is that increases your amp ampires all right we're increasing voltage first then we're increasing ampires okay now what you do from there is you go off the positive to a fuse block all right now this is very important because you want to make sure to protect your solar array uh or i'm sorry your inverter um and your battery bank every chance you get okay so that's a 200 amp anl fuse block all right now 48 volt systems depending on the size of your inverter the fuse will need to be sized appropriate to that okay but now with all-in-one inverters where the charge control system and the inverter is in there all together what you have here is you have a negative and a positive terminal that's for your battery bank okay then there is an input from utility company and sorry guys, it's a little messy in here. This is just the one we move around for construction, but I'm just using this as a teaching tool this morning. So you have your inputs from the utility company. You're gonna have your line feeds coming in, okay? Now most inverters have two hots and a neutral. This one has the two hots and a ground, all right? Some chargers charge differently, all right? Now over here, we've got our line one coming out. Line two is always your red, and neutral is your white. That's coming out going to our breaker box all right now this is just rough installed as you can see there's some covers that's not on it either right now we just use this as a mobile unit and then over here you're going to have a positive output for your pv and a negative output for your pv and that goes out all right now right here is the connections that go out to your solar panels all right now, it's very important when you make your own connections, though, that you got to understand the very last connection that goes into the actual um, positive needs to be a female end. It's opposite of what's coming out of your solar panel. Just like on the negative that's coming in, the, the connection that'll go to the negative on your solar array coming in will be a male end. That's the only thing that's opposite of your normal solar. 
All right, now let's talk power coming out of AC. We've got the AC coming in here to a breaker, all right, an outdoor box. And, and then the inside of the doghouse there is going to outside electrical plugs, all right, for power. Now, that's pretty much a very simple solar array. So you see how simple you could set up something like this on your camping uh, area, by your tiny house, by your main house for backup power, run your whale things and et cetera. You could run this into a, a, a manual transfer switch to go into um, critical loads panel. I mean, there's, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, okay, I encourage people to do things yourself if possible. You know, I like to educate and empower people to see people do great things on their own. Now this is the unit, um, the Randy and them sale, um, with some of their tiny houses. This is one of the options they have. Here you can see the, uh, all the controls and everything, the system overview. Okay. Now I'm gonna turn that off because we're, we're not gonna power it on right now until we get over there and you'll see it in a minute. But uh, right here, if you ever have to charge up a battery bank, there's two ways you can do it. You can borrow off another solar array, okay? Or you can get you a 48 volt golf cart charger, hook it up, charge it. All right, let's do options to that. Guys, I'll show you over here in the pad when we get it going in a minute. Guys, one last note before I go over and show you the solar system on the pad is that you can see right here, this charge controller is running like normal. Um, this is a system that we installed for a customer a long time ago. Um, but what I was gonna show you is, is that if you needed to in a pickle, you can hook up a battery charger. Um, now everything you do, this is your own risk, okay? Don't hold me liable. I just know this stuff's worked in the field, okay? Um, if you ever have a solar system that needed to um, start it off like you'd start a vehicle, okay? Get it back going. Um, so the charge control system would start actually charging the battery bank. Um, you put your negative clamp here, positive clamp there. This midnight, I think it's when it, it registers, I think about 10 volts, 10 to 12 volts, it'll actually turn on and start charging. So it'll actually sense your solar panels again if you've got them in a high voltage array like these out here. And then it'll start actually trying to charge your battery bank up. So if you drained your 48 volt bank, 24 volt bank all the way to dead, okay? Or you left it in the cold or crazy stuff, all right? This is a quick fix to get you back online. Pause here before I go any further and show you all the goodness out here, including incredible tiny homes and their awesome little tiny homes that you make one your own if you so choose to have them build you one. Um, I just want to say, if you haven't checked us out at offgridcontracting.com, make sure to check that out. If you want to go off-grid, we'll be glad to help you. Done many projects for many customers and glad to educate you today also if you intend to do things yourself. Okay, guys, now you can see right here, this is uh, the back of a uh, factory here at Incredible Tiny Homes. There's the vehicle. And here is a Norwegian-style, Viking-style house going out. And here is another one of these uh, custom 16 footers Randy's doing. And so what we're doing here is see the chargers on and I've got the solar panels out and about and custom legs put on them. And so this is going to power tools and stuff so that it can work out here mobile. Um, and if you build something like this on a trailer, you know, mobile or heck if you have us do it for you, I mean, you're, it just doesn't take up much space, but I'm gonna go around the forklift here and walk this way so I can show you. So I wanna show you another thing I've done. Now, a lot of people's not gonna have this, just two all-in-one inverters laying around, but another thing you can do is all-in-one type inverters. You can do battery cables off of that over to a 48-volt bank and jumper off that if your charge system ever went down in one of your inverters. Um, you could use the other one for a charge control, okay? One of these low cost ones. All right, so that's another option that's out there on the table for folks. So I've shown you multiple ways you can get a uh, solar system back online. Um, should for some reason you, you know, let the extreme weather get it dead or um, do deep discharged or DC load was left on too long or sky's the limit that you can see right there. We got her charging off the battery, or off the solar, on the batteries, and um, that pretty much, you know, concludes, uh, you know, a simple little setup like that. But uh, guys, I mean, you're talking um, a day or two project to put together, you know, depending on 
you know, if uh, you're a do-it-yourselfer. And, um, you know, as far as um, solar panels go, last note I'll give on this is you hook one panel to the next through MC4 cables like that. You can't hook them up wrong, okay? You just can't do it. And the extension leads go back to there. Now, you got to be careful because your voltage, your open voltage, say this 36, it adds every one you add up. So you can do strings three or four, depending on some of these all-in-one inverters like that. But um, you just don't want to over PV it, okay? You don't want or over voltage it because um, it can damage it. But um, guys, that pretty much concludes it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video today. Hope it's been educational to you. I promised everybody I'd be trying to do that this year, and uh, this is uh, first one off the press. So until we see you again here, Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel. I hope you have a most blessed day in. Yahushua and I.